This is an introduction to Skyline, the new OpenStack dashboard. Now, let's have the technical overview. Firstly, why is Skyline? Talk to Horizon. We think it is useful, but not amazing. Horizon is widely used, but it has certain pay points. The first point is the heavy and old technical debt. To be specific, the support for AngularJS was terminated, which means the end of life for that. Also, JavaScript libraries are hard to upgrade. The second point is that it renders components depending on the backend template. So, it has complex browser routing management. Finally, it has a complex technology stack and engineering structure. In detail, Horizon developers need to master both Python and JavaScript skills. And some processes things complicated, including collecting static files, testing, and deploying. On the above reasons, the Skyline is born, and it is launched as a modern management dashboard. Skyline contains two parts. The first part is Skyline UI. It is a management dashboard built with React.js as a core, and it runs on the browser. Skyline API is HTTP service that provides necessary APIs for Skyline UI. Then, let's talk about Skyline's core features. Firstly, the front end and the back end have their own responsibilities. The front end focuses on functional design and user experience, and the back end focuses on data logic. Secondly, it is simple and reliable. With the simple architecture and stable operation, it doesn't encapsulate unnecessary logic, and it follows the API or OpenStack service. Thirdly, it provides better performance. It uses coroutines to improve concurrency, and it reduces callings to improve performance. Lastly, it is cool to use and develop. It provides excellent user experience design and software architecture. Next, I will share more about Skyline UI. As the picture shows, the RESTful API works as a persistence layer. The MobX store is used to save data and handle changes. As we say, the root store, instance store, volume store, and so on. When data in store changes, the rendering will be triggered on the corresponding component. Here we go the Skyline details. Whether the menu is configured depends on the Skyline settings API and it realizes the page access control. It has three core components, list, detail, and action. The resource operation page is divided by authority. The project admin and the system admin have different operation panels. Whether these pages are accessed or operations are allowed depends on the endpoint policy rule and the permissions. Each list page has a store, such as instance store, volume store. The root store manages global states, such as authentication information. Each page is based on its corresponding base class. With the base class, only small code needs to be rewritten 
and it greatly reduces the code duplication. Then I will talk that from the base list, base detail, and the base action component. The base list component is first. Let's look at a page built with that component. Whether this page is accessible depends on the endpoint policy rule and the permissions. The displayed data is fetched by calling methods in store, and the data is presented in the form of columns. Actions are managed by action configs. For example, independent operations are managed by primary action such as create instance action above the table. Bench operations are managed by bench action, such as bench start, bench stop, bench reboot, and so on. And the operations on the action column for each item is managed by item action. This page will refresh regularly to get the latest updates and you can also click this button to stop the automatic refresh. The data can be researched based on filter items. In this page, backend pagination is supported and it is achieved by limit, marker, and total count API. When users interact with this page, the page will automatically refresh. Next is the base detail component. Similarly, I will use the page to explain that. This is a resource detail page. It will request information based on root. The page displays details based on customer header and more information is classified by the tab, and they are displayed in the form of card or list. Also, the details page shares the same action configs with list page. Finally, is the base action component. It has four base classes, form action, step action, model action, confirm action, whether actions are allowed depends on policy rules and permissions. When the status changes or there are some certain limitations, whether you can take action depends on allowed. Then let's look at the create volume page as an example. In this page, you can click confirm and it will request the corresponding action of the store, where operation feedback will be returned in the notification box. After talking about Skyline UI, let's take a look at Skyline API. It has three core features. The user session part contains login API, lookout API, and profile API. System configuration contains settings API, and the access permission contains policies API and permissions API. Then we will talk about involving technologies. For the Think IO and Uv Loop, they are the foundation of high performance quarantine applications. The GUNI core and the UV core are multi process ASGI servers. The FAST API is used to build easy to use, full featured API framework. Next, I will explain how Skyline interacts with OpenStack. When the browser is accessed, the cloud service is accessed through this VIP. The request we are firstly enter the HA proxy cluster, and one of these workers will perform load balancing and send the HTTP request to a controller node to access the Skyline UI. 
If the access content is a static file, the Skyline UI will directly return the static file to the browser. But if an API service is accessed, it is forwarded to a Skyline API or OpenStack API through the NGX proxy, and the corresponding data is returned. It sounds a bit abstract, and I will use some examples to illustrate. Let's look at a static example. When user access the home page, the request is sent to get the index.html file by the Nginx. And the Nginx will directly return the index.html and other static files. Next, I will talk about the login process. During the login process, the request containing the username and the password will be received by the Skyline and forwarded to OpenStack Keystone for authentication. If the authentication fails, an error will be returned and the browser will display an error message. But if the authentication is successful, the Skyline will use the Kingston token to generate user session JWT token. Besides, it will set the session ID to cookie and return it to the browser. Next is an example of calling a sample API. When creating a server, the request is directly forwarded to OpenStack Nova service through the NGX, and the success or failure response will be returned. Finally, I will show the process of calling a complex API. When accessing the server or related resources, a request will be sent to the Skyline. The Skyline will call OpenStack APIs such as Nova, Cinder, Glance. As a result, all responses and the resources involved will be returned together. That's all. Thank you.